welcome to the adventures of King Melville the Black of the Iron Throne. Somebody in the comment section yesterday asked me to launch more of the new immersive events. So you know what? Let's do it. Bear in mind we haven't had one for quite some time. Uh, launch an event chain. So we've done the thief, have we not? Um, let's do the wife ambitions event chain. That sounds pretty good. Are we married? I've got to, I've got to, yeah, of course we married the genius woman, didn't we? Right, cool. Okay. Today as well, I want to go ahead and finish off the ultimate plan. We removed the Stormlands and gave that to a well-deserved Martin man. We've got a well-deserved Martin man as the Lord Paramount of the Stormlands. Are we working on Dawn right now? Right, yeah, 238% on Dawn. Somebody pointed out that Dragonstone is still independent. So I figured we'll go and deal with that while we wait for our plot to fire, seeing as this will take all of about two seconds. Oh, we can just straight up claim it. We don't even have a du jour claim. We have a, a, a regular personal claim because... I guess our Targaryen bloodline, right? Either way, this is cool. Now, we will just vassalize him, so he'll become the Lord of, of Driftmark. We'll get Dragonstone. We'll still have to give it out. But we could give it out to a vassal that we haven't also declared war on. So rather than just vassalizing this guy and having him hate us because we declared war on him, we could take the whole thing, take the Duchess of the Title and Grant to say this guy instead, who will like us a lot because we get him a new title. He's also House Royce, which I think is uh, fairly deserving of his own... Uh, of, that's obviously quite a, a, an old noble house, so I, I think they deserve something. All right, um, someone joined. Oh, Mountain in the Vale. Yeah, I shouldn't really be surprised on that. One. I should have really got my army back into action, ready to launch as soon as possible. Trading some of our learning there for a little bit more, a little bit more intrigue. I figured the intrigue stat is one thing we're lacking, or at least we're lacking. How much base to learning have we got left? Four. Yeah, I think we'll keep it how it is then for the time being. That's the only thing that you can really do with Game of Thrones one, because of course in Game of Thrones one, learning doesn't really do a huge amount besides fact education. Bear in mind, the base game is just for tech points, right? So, for us, that's, uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty valuable trade. And we've got just about enough George points to keep it going here. All right, let's do it. Let's get in there. Dragonstone, this is mine now. Obviously, this this isn't Dragonstone. This is Driftmark, but we will take Dragonstone in a second. Um, oh, so Jaymund coming in in the clutch there. That's all of our tyranny and dishonor removed. Oh, wow. So, I guess it... I swear, just a second ago, did we not have both Tyrannical Stain and Dishonor? I guess technically we've not been caught with anything. Maybe it removes both at once. Oh, well. That's fantastic either way. Have we got any siege leaders? Uh, no. Good. Okay, that's fine. We'll just sit here for the next 400 years. Um, to be honest, taking this capital is probably going to do... Oh, look, we're level 6 refuge and we're booming. Wow. It's so rare that we actually see that. Cool. Um, to be honest, we're, we're probably going to... The second we take Driftmark, we're probably going to be done. But I will bring over the troops from the Iron Throne... Uh, sorry, from King's Landing... To help out with the Siege of Dragonstone. Actually, you know what? I'm going to kill these troops first. Because I imagine we've got some spare Battle War score kicking around. Let's kill those guys. Um, yeah, I have 400 gold. Why not? We could definitely spare it right now, huh? There we go. And then... Oh, did we just kill the leader? I think we did. Uh, what? what? No, that wasn't... Yeah, it was. 16th of Second Moon, 86, 27. We, we just killed this guy in combat. So, GMR. Nice work. Okay. Um, not really the best outcome. Obviously, I'd have rather have taken him prisoner, but that's all right. Uh, use it as you see fit. Thank you very much. We'll start working on Dragonstone as well. Get this done as soon as possible. I don't want to be caught with... We don't, we don't want to be caught with our pants down here, just in case the Dawn plot fires. The last thing we want is to be fighting Dragonstone and Dawn at the same time. Ah, shit. Well, never mind, I guess. All right. Um, what do we do then? Should we leave these troops on Dragonstone, get this war done, and use our vassal issues? We're at war with the Vale as well. No, we've got to deal with the war of Dragonstone first. So let's let's crack that one, and then after that, well, we might as well disband you, I guess. Um, after that, we'll go on Dawn. Now these guys are an ally in our war for Dragonstone, even if they're not an ally in the war for Dawn. So war. I shouldn't say the war for Dawn because the war for Dawn is the war against the White Walkers. Um, you know what I mean, anyway. So that even though they're an ally in the other war, they'll still help us in the war against Dawn. Oh, God, the hiccups are already in. I've been cursed by my maester again. Oh, we've also got an adventurer threat. Medga. <laughs> Fuck off, Medga. I've got enough on my plate right now. Lunor Commander, great. So we are fighting the Vale. We're fighting Dragonstone, and we're fighting Dawn simultaneously. This is the situation I didn't want to be in. Because now these obviously have two titles. So we're fighting three of the seven kingdoms when we ourselves only have four of them. This is not ideal, although this one obviously technically isn't one. We've basically turned it into one. We've got to be very quick with this. So why don't we get Melville leading this one personally? We don't have any good siege commanders, so it doesn't really matter. 12%. Um, why have Dawn already got 12% war score? Taka controls all of their holdings. Yeah, this is what we can't really afford to wait for the war in Dragonstone to end. We have to get down there as soon as possible and help out. Oh, cool. 
We gain train and fighter. We did gain wounded, which is a bit of a shame, but it's not a big deal. Win the war. That gives us plus one marshal as well. Let's go for that. 31 marshal would be quite nice. And 115 personal combat. We're an absolute monster at this stage. I'm hoping we can meet them in... Uh, is he leading troops himself? He absolutely is. And they are around here, so stick around this side of the mountains. We might be able to cut their army off. 25,000, sure. They might have more troops. Oh, he wants a trial by combat uh, against him. You are so dead. I must prevail. Poison my light claws, Bane. Oh, we're not going to do that. We are we are not a dishonorable man. Oops, we are. <laughs> we're not. Oh, he's a Baratheon. Oh, incredible news. Fantastic. Gods were not in their favor. Holy shit, that was a Baratheon. Um, and this guy is Rodwall, right? This is the guy we took Storm's End from. Execute him. Execute him, the gods. Uh, uh, yeah, behead him. A legal execution of the guy that was previously the ruler of the Storm. And so a big troublemaking vassal. And we killed a Baratheon in the process. That it couldn't have been a, a greater gift given to us right there. Have we got enough troops in Dragonstone, do you think? 30,000. This is why we need to deal with the sport as soon as possible, because our fucking allies are garbage. I might send them to go for Sunspear instead. We can't. We can't because of the Mega War system, obviously. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, well, there's their troops. Um, it's not the one that he's personally leading. What's that, like 11,000 there? This could be risky, especially as we're taking a river crossing and we're going to hills as well, I assume. Uh, yeah, we are. Okay. Okay. Oh, luckily we managed to dodge him there. Okay, see if we can track him. Come on. Grab him, grab him, grab him. Um, I don't care about you, thank you. So he's going that way. Oh, we'll spin around. See if we can catch him here. Come on. Oh, he's still gone, for fuck's sake. Taking the high tide, it's over. All right, uh, take it myself. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do anyway. So now he's reduced down to a regular old... Reduced down to a regular old guy, and then we'll give him Dragonstone instead. So we've got a vassal that loves us, and we've dealt with the vassal that hates us. Fantastic. Right, everybody get on the boats. And these guys, surprise attack straight to Sunspear. What do you think? Actually, no, let's drop... Here's an idea. Drop you guys off on the mainland to start off with. Right, let's get rid of you. And then we'll take these guys and go for a sneak attack on Sunspear while our troops flail around the desert trying to find someone to kill. Um, guess we better we better take something here. We have to take something. Wrath or Patient. That's a hard one for a martial character. Um, martial plus one, fear plus ten. Patient gives plus one to everything but fear minus ten. I'm going to go for Wrath in this situation. And then... Oh, cool. Someone knows that we're related to Lord Paramount Mathar the Able. Yes, we are. Uh, some Marek. Is he any good? Whoa! Trickstar unyielding chivalry leader direct leader. Sorry, chivalry leader, cavalry leader. Direct leader, holy warrior, brawny. He's only got 17 martial, but his actual troop bonus is going to be insane. Cavalry leader. Oh, wow. Damage against religious enemies, 55%. Fantastic. Welcome to court. Oh, and there's their army. Okay, okay. So here's what we'll do then. Send these 11,000 to go and cut those guys off. And if we have to swap out our commanders here, I will do so. So let's go Marcella, Viserys, and Geomar. And then on this one, we'll go Melville. And then, uh, so Geomar I put on there. So Mathar and Jeremy. And then on the, the troops in the ships, because this is just going to be a siege where their armies over the other side of the world. doesn't really matter if we have the best commanders on here or not, to be honest with you. Oh, these guys are terrible. But they're basically just here to coordinate the siege. You guys land in Sunspear. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Boom. Uh, thank you for that. Boom. Uh, Okar has failed to answer my call to arms and has joined the rebels. Oh, shit. That's massive. Because we're at minus 44%. Okay. That could be a problem. Because now we're fighting the Reach and Dawn. However. If we win. We can revoke the Reach as well. We can deal with the Reach. And we can deal with Dawn. Giving us the Westerlands, the Stormlands, the Reach and Dawn. Then our conquests are only foreign. We've dealt with all of our internal struggles in one fell swoop. That would be incredible. Um, fucking hell. That's a hell of an army they're going to be able to field though. How many troops has he got? 61,000. Oh, God. Uh, they're offering us a loan of... We don't need a loan. We don't need a loan. I might hire some troops, though. This is a bit... This is a bit messy, isn't it? No, thank you. Um, let's just kill off whoever we can as we head over in the hopes that... Yeah, whatever. In the hopes that we can kind of thin their numbers out before they start becoming one massive army. This is fine. If they want to reinforce this... Oh, maybe not that much, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah fine, fine. Troops get 10% morale. Come on. Oh, I think we're going to lose. Oh, fuck. Get out of here. I don't give a shit about the damn King's Guard. Yeah. Oh, that's a big setback. Okay. Um, I'll be honest. I was kind of hoping our own Marshal would 
help reinforce that one a lot more than what happened. 16,000 there. Fuck. <laughs> this is a bad war all of a sudden. Okay, okay, this is fine. Um, it's not that big a deal so far. Sunspear is being sieged. Fine. Can't assault it down. Too powerful. Fine. Um, attach the Stormlander army to this one. And we'll hang around. This is where most of the battles are going to go down. So we'll hang around this area and see if we can thin out some troops this way. Right. I'll stand there. Let them attach, which they should be now. Yep, they are. Right. 11,000 men there. Kill those guys off. We need to pick very sensible fights. That's no longer a sensible fight. Bollocks. Um... Fuck. Okay, Met, look. Hey, maybe we can end the war entirely in one foul swoop by catching him in... Just catch him. Just catch him. It's easy. Forehead. Just catch him. Boom. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um, 8,000 men there. Come around, meet these troops. This is horrible. This is fucking horrible. Even then, we've only got 25,000. I guess we've got the Stormlander troops as well that aren't being countered yet. Um, you fucking traitors. I will have every one of your heads on a platter. Mark my damn words. 87%. We just need to siege something. Oh, just as we're about to take it too. Are they going to get there in time? What are we looking at? When are they going to get there? Uh, okay, okay. In that case, swap you out to our best characters. We might be able to hold this off. We might just be able to hold this off. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take it. Take it. Take it. Yes. Okay. 39%. That's what we're after. Whoo. Clawed it back at the last second there. That was fucking close. Okay. These guys. No, I don't care about your lines. These guys are going to be the squad that we use. I don't care about the attrition either. We are going to have to accept that there will be attrition here. They've got a unit we know somewhere of 30,000 men. We have to take some attrition. We don't have a choice. Um, let's see who we can find kicking around. Where are your armies? Okay, so we've got 8,000 there. The Reach has splintered, though. The West March, the Tallies have agreed to join us. That's good. Now that they've seen which way the war is... Ah, oh, we got smashed there back in Sunspear. Fine, but I think that's probably the bulk of their troops there. So let's head back over. See if we can get them to take a river crossing. Now's not the time, but thank you. Okay. Get into that fog of war. That's what we're after. Snake around. Let's get to plank it down. Look, we saw some of their troops going that way. So this is quite a nice maneuver. This is going to kill not only the bulk of their forces, but they're also leading those personally. We might. Oh, damn it. Aaron Tidmarsh has been killed. Who? <laughs> Aaron Tidmarsh? Was that not the leader of the Reach? The fuck is... Aaron Tidmarsh. Um, Lord Paramount... A oh, of Giscar? Oh, was that the guy in charge of Dawn? Oh, I suppose he was technically a vassal, wasn't he? That's a shame, because it means we now can't capture him and force the surrender that way. But this is, this is a fantastic start. Okay, we've brought it back here, somehow. Let's kill off the last of their troops, because we've got a lot of Battle War score to make up for here. Um... Yeah, we've only got 34%. And then we'll go back and take the rest of Sunspear. Okay, this is some good shit. Barbara is pregnant and 300 gold. Great news. Let's assault this one down. It's a bit risky, I will admit. Have we got any of the troops kicking around anywhere? No. Um, I assume the Westerlands just didn't join us. Westerland of Reachman, Dijon, whatever, Mournhill. Right, they were already at war, I would assume then. Uh, we've got 13,000 back up there. So let's send our boats back up to pick up the extra troops. Oh, we got the troops from Dragonstone now. Of course. That's quite nice. And then we'll try and knock this one down as soon as possible. Get their entire base capital done. Then we might only have to siege down a couple of other things to be to be done with things. Sorry, I can't afford to wait for you guys. So I'm just going to disband them in a second. You guys on the boats. Let's get the troops from Dragonstone. Nice. And let's get back down there as soon as possible. Now, we are going to take a lot of attrition. Again, we, we kind of have to. We might not have to anymore, though, in hindsight, given that we've killed... They've got 3,000 men left. And the Reach have just gone into a massive... Rebellion of their own. 20,000. They're going to be too concerned with their own vassals splintering away, I would assume. They've got 20,000 men somewhere. We've got 9,000 there. Yeah, they're all splintered, so we wouldn't need to worry about the attrition too much. However, I'm going to keep this as one big unit and just assault down what's left, and then we'll split it after the fact. I'll uh, put half onto boats and, or something like that. Right. Go. 65%. 66%. Okay. Um, Let's merge the stack, split the stack, and send half... Let's put, let's put these guys on boats and then leave these guys as a sieging force with the Stormlander troops attached to us. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we've got 2,000 men coming down that way. Let's stick to the coast here. Let's stick to the coast. Uh, is that a separate sea tile? What is that? I have no idea. Uh, oh, right. It's to show that there's no ports in those places. Because if they connected up to there, they'd have a port. Right. Got it. Look at that. 
So it's um, it, it's the it's the MTC tile. Very cool. Okay, uh, let's drop you there. That's a clever way of implementing that. The only problem is it means we can't attack through that way, which kind of ruins my plan entirely. We'll come back up here and pick our troops back up in Starfall then. Davos Martin, unfortunately, you're, you'll get named later. Um, still no geniuses. We haven't got a huge chance of getting genius. Don't don't get me wrong here. Ah, um, oh, fuck. We haven't got a huge chance of getting genius, but it would still be... It's still significant enough that we, we, we should kind of expect it. We should still kind of hold out for a genius kid. 66%. Get the fuck out of here. We could. Here would be a tactical play. Let the Muncie to top level of their capital, then move in and re-siege it because their leader is now an adult. So we might be able to capture him during the siege. Um, however, given that our troops there just decided to bum rush them for no reason and almost got wiped out, I think we'll probably go and help them out instead. Morons. And I think we're probably at the stage now where we can just sit and siege. Look at how many of look at what the Reach have left. They've been just completely devastated by this war. More importantly, they know that they're fucked. We can we can just revoke their title too. Though that was looking a little tricky for a second, keeping a giant stack of caches worked out pretty good damn well, huh? There we go. That's what they and they deserve it. They bought that on themselves for trying to rebel. So I have absolutely no qualms with uh thank you, Stormlands, for finally joining us there. I guess we'll just sit and let the siege down now then. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. 100 percent Our vassals really did put in a lot of good work there. Sie siege into these random provinces. Look at that. The Lord of Dawn. Uh so Lady of Vaith. Uh, I think let her bend the knee. Um, I think that's a good idea. Let her bend the knee. And then any minor lords can bend the knee. Lord of the Reach, forfeit the Reach. Absolutely. And all Oak Heartlands. Five, we're paying five tyranny to get back Highgarden. I'm going to take that. And I'm also going to take it from this guy as well. And now they're allowed to rebel. Why are they... I will admit, I'm not a big fan of that mechanic. You crush them in a rebellion once, and then when you demand their titles, if they were only a... Whatever. Uh, if they were only a minor lord, you can still <laughs> genuinely just maul to death the previous owner. My god. If, if they, sorry, if they're only an ally in the war, then they can once again go into rebellion, which is a bit a bit silly, but never mind. Um, although the plus side, now he's a traitor, but do we still have the tyranny from it? We do. So even if he goes into rebellion, you still gain the tyranny. Which doesn't make much sense, but hey. Um, fine. Okay. Well, it's a bit of a mess, but we can give out Sunspear now to a Martin. Here we are. Right. Um, I also need to tidy up the Dijon map mode, which I will do very, very soon. So, Great House, my dynasty. Uh, ruler, preferably no. Search Realm, and let's sort by age. 32, Bellard, Treasurer of Stoteworth. Invite him to court. My friend, you know what's coming. An entire kingdom, basically. Uh, Grant line of title. Here you go, my friend. You can have Sunspear, and then you can also have... Dawn. Oof, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, you got to admit. Now it's just the deal with the Reach, and again, we've got this one in the back. That was a lot more than I expected to get done today. Oh! You did what? You bitch. You're so dead. Fine, fine. I will show you how it works. Uh, Have we got anything else that can cause fear? Tear his bowels out, put him in the bear pit, boil him alive, saw him in half, bury him alive, wall him up in a tomb, wall him up in a tomb. That seems like the most cruel thing we could do there. Oh my god, they're getting annihilated. Why did they go into rebellion when they know for a fact that none of their vassals are loyal to them? You got 16,000 men. It's basically just the Northern Reach was all they kept. Old Town, the West March, the most powerful vassals there. High Towers and Tarleys completely turning against them. It's just the Northern... Oh, wait. Gunter. Gunter needs repairing. King Gunter needs to stay in the fleet. It's 115 gold for one marshal. When you phrase it like that, it's obviously, uh, it's obviously a lot better. How many troops have got in King's Landing? None, because these are obviously still our bulk of our forces here. And then the one thing I'm dreading is after we've dealt with this, what is our du jour map mode going to look like? And more importantly, how many people are going to have somehow clawed independence or joined the Mega War Succession have had vassal contracts broken? And it's going to be a lot of tidying up, I think. Uh, thank you for agreeing to join us. Much, much obliged. Right, let's go for his troops then. Because just having 11,000 men kicking around is not really what I'm after there. But especially because we know it will take fucking edge to siege High Garden. Um, I didn't mean to do that. I swear they've changed the order of those buttons. It's just like pure muscle memory at this stage. I, I convinced that they've swapped those around. Anyway, oh, well, they got their troops. Good work. Uh, wow, old boys annihilated them. Turns out playing on very hard goes both ways, huh? Because I assume the AI, our AI allies, also gain the bonuses from very hard, right? Holy shit, I never actually considered that before. It's playing on very hard. Man, why have I never put that together? Playing on very hard. You could save yourself a lot of effort by just only fighting awards via proxy with your allies i never considered that especially if it does work that way i need to i need to look into that done wait was that it i suppose we do have twenty-seven thousand men thank you and i will be once again 
demanding his head. Uh, and then he deserves this, bearing in mind, bearing in mind what he did. Uh, oh, why have I not got all those fancy execution methods? Whatever. Hang in then. And we got his old treasury too. And then we'll also... Uh, he can also owe us a favor from beyond the grave. So we've got Dawn's treasury and we've got the Reacher's treasury. I imagine I'm going to have to go through and tidy this all up again. Oh, fuck. That's a lot of crap again. It's a lot of books and like random splint mail armor and random crappy gear. Not bad though. And now we'll see what our throne looks like when it all comes back together. You know what? Not as bad as I expected. I imagine Silver Hill is at war against these guys. Uh... What are they doing? They absolutely are. Yeah, Silver Hill are at war against um, defending against these guys by the looks of it. What's our jaw map mode? A complete fucking state, but obviously we do need to give out uh, some Martin land. Oh, now everybody wants to join our court. What a shocker. I'm going to pick someone who's worthy of it. Justin's pretty good. Spymaster of the Citadel. And he's already in the reach. I think that's a pretty good... Uh... Oh, wait. Can I not invite him to Grand Land Entire? Here we are. Give you High Garden and then follow it up with the reach. Spymaster of the Reach knows a lot about the Reach, knows how the Reach works. And he is a, a Grey Eminence, so in theory should be a good ruler. The only downside to that is he's got high intrigue, so we might get a knife in the back. Watch this. Ready? Boom. Oh, that looks pretty good. I know it doesn't look like much change, but that's the point. So, dynastic map mode, when you obviously control click on any map mode, it will show sub-dynasties. There's your sub-dynasties. Everywhere is still Martin. Fucking fantastic. So... I suppose a better way to to do it might be to go like that and then sort by rank. So you've got Melville, Tristan, Lord Paramount of the Westerlands, Justin, Lord Paramount of the Reach, Rayella, Lady Paramount of the Stormlands, Ballard, Prince of Dawn, Lord of the Otherlands, Lord Reaver of Harlaw. Wow. That's obviously in the Iron Islands. That's quite cool. Rupert, Lord of Cracklaw Point, Bola, Lord of Crack, uh, Craster's Keep, and then a bunch of other crap too. And obviously a lot of dynasty members. Incredible. That's fantastic progress today. I wasn't expecting to get both of them in one fell swoop. Now we've got external wars to fight. So, the question is, how do we want to do it? Do we want to... Do we want to push our royal claims? And then do what we've just done there. Push them into rebellion. Or do we want to claim them on behalf of other people? Do we want to go for marriage? I genuinely think the fastest way to do it would be royal claim. And then cause two round rebellions. And then revoke it the way we just did. Because if they've done enough good management here, chances are that their sub-vassal of the trident will join them if I fabricate treason on them. So just like the Reach joined Dawn as an alliance, you would assume after all this inbreeding and marrying or whatever else, and the, the fact they're both the same culture, etc., etc., they might end up... Oh, I'm sure they've got the bloodline too. They haven't. They've got the Martin bloodline, the Brathy bloodline. A dirty abomination. Two mortal enemies joined together in Joffrey Antley. I can't stand for that. We'll hold a triumph in celebration of our new victory. So let's go ahead and hold a grand tournament for the whole of the round. Because it also obviously doubles up as a feast. We'll also go out. Um, what's the smell? I have to find out. I'll go ahead. These voices sound foreign. I'll look for a quiet place to rest. We want to go for this one. Nope. Failed again. Damn it. I, I guess it must be random. I swear to God we've done that one. And obviously, we've already got Iron Stomach though, haven't we? And Brave, so we don't really need it anymore. Fire Obsessed would be quite nice. Neither. Probably the best outcome. Well, obviously not. Fire Obsessed would be good. But we didn't get Trusting. That's that's the important thing. We could also visit the Barber Surgeon and try and get rid of, of, of Wounded. We lose 200 Prestige. Because I guess a king should not be going to a... A barber surgeon to be tended to. But that's quite alright. 200 prestige in exchange for definitely staying alive is fine by me. Obviously we're going to go all in on this feast. This needs to be grand. To celebrate our victories and celebrate our new vassals. Ah, new wardens. Warden of the south should go to the lord of the reach. Who's, funnily enough, our dynasty member. And then warden of the east goes to the stormlands traditionally, right? No, no, no. That goes to the vale? I honestly don't remember. Um, don't care about these because they're all just random lowborn. Um, that would seem just. Sure, 60 gold for you. Anything that's asking for gold at this stage, I'm like, yep, you can have that one. Yep, you can have that. Whatever. It's just winning people over. And, and gold is something we definitely have a lot of. There we are. Roof from Rollingford. Lord Gas is now happy because we spent just... Just throw money at things until your problems go away. Patreon.com slash Roll 2 Games. Born in the East. Here we are. Yeah, I think it is tradition in the Vale. Hence why we can't say it should fall to the Lord of the Vale. Um, I would give it to... Well, I was going to say I'll give it to uh, the Lord of the Stormlands. But I guess I'll give it to Gas Rollingford. <laughs> <laughs> Who would we like to give the honor of being warden? That's so good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to send that to Discord. That's fucking incredible. Now, for a man who's completely rewritten the political landscape of the Iron Throne to make sure that his dynasty have ultimate power here, he looks pretty sad about it. Maybe maybe a haircut will cheer him up. There you are. Let's, make it, let's give him a bit more of a, a, bit more of a, a regal haircut. Um, hmm, it's kind of difficult to tell when he's got a fucking fence on his head. 
Uh, let's go for... There you are. That's a nice regal beard. He still looks extremely sad about just about everything going on. Um, let's, let's flip from intrigue focus to something else then. Bear in mind that we now can't do any more uh, revolts or anything because we need to actually grab some more land before that even becomes plausible. Or we'll cheer him up. Carousing? Carousing would cheer him up. Let's do it. Let's invite Barbary to carousing. How would she? She's 33 and she's pregnant again. Okay. This could be finally. And let's invite all our vassals carousing. Fuck it. I've invited everybody I could, including the High Septon. So let's see if they'll reply. And the cool thing about this is anybody who turns us down, we also know who we have to kind of send some money to here as well as try and, try and cheer him up. There we are. So he's on board. Is that the... <laughs> <laughs> Was it the Grand Maester just agreed to just agreed to come? Okay, that's fine by me. Uh, it should be fun. Thank you for joining me. Lord Commander of the Kingsguard is not up for it. There you go. You can have that one. Um, well, I'm out of money. Oh, Christ. One of those guys was a bit of a greedy boy. Damn it. Um, I think the High Septon turned us down. I think two of our Lord Paramounts did as well. That's a bit of a shame. Oh, well. It's, it's just a bonus little extra thing, you know? Maybe maybe like a little after party after our big feast that's coming up. But this is another cool thing about being able to brand people traitors if they refuse us. Lord Jareth of Stoneway is declaring war of... J Jared's war of Stoneway. Jareth's war of Stoneway, like the Goblin King, to take Dawn. I'm now going to tell him to stand down. And he will. He will stand down. He doesn't stand a goddamn chance. We've got to wait for this guy to obviously... This guy and his descendants to kind of keep control of Dawn for a little bit more. Uh, also, what's going on with the Danes? Oh, they're into the Stormlands. We're going to have some family infighting here if we're not careful. So I don't like the fact that Rayella Martin is... Rayella Martin is, is old gods? It's not a big deal. Um, let's go ahead and arrange marriage between... Uh, arrange patrol between her and... Davos? How old is she? She's six. That'll do. There you go. Matrilineal? Boy, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, I'm going to make her matrilineal anyway. Uh, otherwise, there's a good chance that she will just break the betrothal. So we'll do that one. That way we can kind of keep her as an, an, a guaranteed ally as well. I assume if we do that, they can't break their vassal contract. So say, for example, where the Reach joined Dawn in the, in the Rebellion. If she's allied to us, I assume she can't overwrite that. Oh, there's a send carousing invites button. Fuck. All my subjects. Damn it. As me, like a fool, sending it one by one manually. I I think I got everyone, though, so I don't think this will actually... don't think anybody will reply. Oh, or not. Oh, my God, that's a lot of people. Look at the outline on that letter. Did we just... Did we just invite everybody in the realm? All my subjects. Oh, that's quite cool. Oh, no. <laughs> How many people did I just invite carousing? We're going to need a whole castle for this. Prince Le Guin, how is he coming out? He's actually coming out okay. Um, certainly no martial warrior like, like, like us and our father before us, but it's a Jedi, like me and my father, anyway, uh, 400 gold, fuck it, I mean, it's only gonna put us a little bit into debt, actually didn't even, um, alright, fine, but I need to make sure that we need to save up, obviously, enough gold to be able to make sure all these kids get a decent education, you're coming out terribly, and that's because I forgot to educate you, and I only have myself to blame, um, sign guardian to young Davos, he's affectionate, fuck, we might as well turn him into, a. Uh, we might as well just turn him into a, a decent... Is that the Lord of Bravos is chosen by a law? That's pretty dangerous. Um, we might as well turn him into a diplomat instead then. What? Queen Barbary. Oh, Barbary's now... I don't know why for a second I thought he would be a bastard. He's weak. Ah. Uh, for if that is, whatever. We're not training you to be martial. Um, Marissa. She's pretty good. Master of coin. Also our current character's mother, so he's definitely trustworthy. And she's a genius. There we go. Krausing's over. Not much happened. Um, we gain Krausing giving us plus one to plus three, 30% chance to lose stress. Missed it, damn it. Okay, we'll send more crowds invites the second that becomes available then. One of the mechanics I haven't really talked about much this entire series, because it hasn't been super relevant, to be honest, but I really, really like this as a mechanic, and that's the fear the mechanic, that you don't have to just be the greatest diplomat with the biggest purse to win your vassals over. One of the ways you can do it is you can be a, you know, you can be a, an arbitrary, wrathful tyrant, but if you keep crushing revolts, obviously they're, they're going to be less likely to keep going into revolts, especially if you're, like, overwhelmingly powerful. So the way they represent that in the Game of Thrones mod is, is through the fear meter. So you can see there because of um, the amount of fear that we've accrued, whether that is, as we saw when we had that person's relative in prison, when we executed them, that gave us some fear points. When you crush rebellions, that gives you fear points. Depending on how you handle rebellious vassals, that can affect it. And again, we could be, we could have no diplomacy whatsoever, but we would still have that intimidating factor. So the revolt risk is lower, the plot power is higher, um, because people are just so more afraid of us. And it says their vassals are 50% less likely to join hostile factions or start plots. Not that we have to worry about that anyway, because we've got the bonus of being massively intimidating because of our martial score. Wrath that also gives some points there, so you can see fear plus 10. The bonus to that is 
we've also got no factions and we've got all this loyalists and, and everything. It's just all working together in tandem right now. But it does give you that variation of playstyle, which I actually really like. I'd love to see something like that in the base game at some stage. Any laws we could change? Um, minimum faith authority might not be too bad. Make sure that we're keeping the power and the re religion doesn't have any. We could even go higher realm authority. To be fair, given that it's only a minus five vassal opinion, and the vassal who dislikes us the most still has 33 opinion of us, I think this is more than a safe bet. Now, that also gives us the bonus of a basically banking opinion for future characters. If we do end up playing as Prince Le Guin, who might end up kind of crappy here, we can, as him, repeal the High Crown Authority, go back to Medium. They'll get the 15 opinion for repealing it and the bonus opinion from not having it in the first place. So it's a way of, while the realm's at peace here, just sort of keeping sure that the future generations will have something to fall back on if things do fuck up. Um, but yeah, no, I think this is a great place to leave it for today. Slightly shorter than usual. But we're kind of in a place now where we're, we're, we're ensuring that there's stability. Making sure that things like, obviously, Dawn are keeping their power. Making sure that High Garden and whatever else are keeping their power. Then tomorrow, because I don't really want to start a war with the Mountain and the Veil right now. Because it could go on for 20, 30 minutes. We will start a war with the Mountain and Veil tomorrow. Get the Trident and the Veil under House Martin. Then it's just the Iron Islands in the North. We could be done in two more episodes. All of the thrones of the Iron Throne, all of the, all of the various of the Seven Kingdoms will be under house martin unified at long last thank you all for watching hope you guys have enjoyed this one this has been a very productive episode today again the reach joining dawn was our, our real victory for us there thank you as i explained in remote which today i recorded first for reasons unbeknownst to me the patreon list when i tried updating them today for whatever reason were just non-existent uh, i said that i had zero patrons which is devastating for business so i i did update people in the uh in the patreon discord chat so i think everybody it's relevant to will already know um, but just to let you know as well, hopefully that'll be done tomorrow. But people were saying they were having some, some login changes as well. So maybe it's a new website update or whatever. But hopefully by tomorrow, we'll have those new lists. But I do have a few more names left on my list to get through. So a thank you to Skaz, Scorched, Pelvis Presley, Amethyst Corona, Roll 2 d one Games, Gogolus, my name isn't Dio, Harik, Gwen S, Northern Bear, Derek, Nostros, Paul, Leo, Odie, James Shea, Harry McGowan, Goatfather, Alex, Crow Skull, and everyone else at the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well to Tofu10, Mr. Awesome, RKL, Astro, Panthbell, Silent Sentinel, Asaro, Cam, Choma, Noobmeister, Deadly Kitten Hunt, Valkyrie, Don, Hated, and everybody at Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place, especially during lockdown. See you all tomorrow for potentially the penultimate episode of the Martin Conquest.